Hi, and welcome to Azure Function Tutorials. Today we are going to explore together Azure Functions, and we'll learn what they are and how we can use them and how we are benefit to us as a developers. So uh, the easiest scenario I found is to get more in these functions and learn them is by creating a small application, uh, image uploader. We can do anything more than that, sure, 100%. And uh, let me show, show you what's my plan for this series of videos. So, and then introduction will talk about, about Azure Functions and we just will learn what they are and how we can use them and what's the benefit of these functions. Uh, I will not go that deep on them. So I just, I will just over uh, overview on them. Uh, there is good documentation for Microsoft about uh, Azure Functions. I will create a, a small scenario or that diagram, I will, I will explain it now to you. It's not that complicated and it's not that easy. So what you will start step by step as a beginners will start with something simple. So the scenario is we create front end and back end. The back end will be handled by Azure Functions and the front end, we can use any front end language we need. So the easiest one for me is uh, SP Core MVC. So it will be that client. We'll create uh, a product and that product uh, can have multi images. So the first scenario is we'll store that images in our uh, local machine. So uh, what's that is just for testing, it's not recommended. So just storing, or you can store it in any uh, file uh, server. So currently we'll use it and we'll store it in the WW root uh, image uh, folder. That will be the first video and the first scenario. After that, we'll convert it and we'll use Azure Functions. And we'll talk there about Azure Functions and we'll see, I will learn more about the, what is the HTTP trigger, what's the blob storage uh, or the blob trigger. And there is many uh, type of Azure Function, the isolated or the in process. So we'll, I found this the easiest way is rather than the, we talk about it and we give long lecture and for nothing, we can use it in, in a small uh, application. So, uh, so the plan for today is we'll talk uh, about Azure Functions and we'll go straight away to the our ISV. This diagram. So what we'll do, we'll we'll take this diagram part by part. You know, it's as you see, it's it's there is many things uh, or many functions just for uploading a file or image. I'm I'm sure with you. I agree with you too. Uh, it's very complicated. But the idea of the video is we want to learn more about it. So what is the orchestrator? What is the HTTP trigger? So I found this the easiest way is to upload the image and show you what the, how we can read the data using the Azure function, how I can handle it with the blob storage and how I can handle it with the trigger and how I can use it with the uh, service bus. So let's just me explain this diagram very quick. So the web uh, part will be, as we said, MVC application, just small application. I will use all, everything's auto-generated. We'll not write uh, much there. So we'll call it, let's suppose a shop and that shop will have a product table and uh, image URL, let's say, or anything we can call it uh, for the storing the image URLs. All that will be stored in SQL Server. The second part, which will, so the second part, which the Azure function, as you see here, all this stuff here. So after we store the, the product, we are going to send the image that we uploaded will be converted to byte or base 64 will be sent to Azure function. Azure function will take that uh, uh, JSON data, it could be one image or two or 10 or 100, doesn't matter. So we'll, you will take that, uh, the first endpoint will take the, the, the payload, will get it as a JSON function and will throw it in a blob of storage called process media. So and that's in process, uh, and there will stay there the data. So uh, the blob storage will trigger something called orchestrator, which is called durable function. So durable function is just a type of Azure functions. So durable function there is orchestrator. Orchestrator will send notification for uh, each fun activity depend on the request. So here when we throw straight away, we throw the file to the media. Uh, blob storage. This orchestrator will take the data from there and will, will convert it to the object we, uh, that we sent. So it will be images, uh, image or one, one or two. 
So depend on how many image I have there, I will run number of uh, media handler. Media handler will take the data from the orchestrator, will convert it to image and send it to the uh, blob, the main blob storage there. So that's after we handle all the one or two or three or hundred image. After we send them and we pass them to to the media storage, I will send notification again to the orchestrator. I have done my work. I handle all that stuff. So the orchestrator will send a, a, a request or a, a, the, to send the data, which will contain the image URL with the product ID, will be sent to the activity, the queue activity. Queue activity will send the data, sorry, the image URLs to the media URLs. In the media URLs, there is someone will be waiting there for this data, which call it the queue handler. So the queue handler will take the data. Here, I can send it to SQL database straight away, or I can make it more professional to send it to service bus. From the service bus or from the from the SQL server, I can use mass transit or I, uh, or I can use worker, or as I said, I can straight away send it to my database, but that would be not good. Uh, and we'll back my data, some listener will be listening to that service bus and will be uh, send it to my uh, SQL uh, server database. It's not easy as you see it, but as I said, the all whole point of this one, the number of functions I have created here is only just to show you Azure uh, functions, and we learn together. You know, I want you, I want you to know what's mean HTTP trigger, what's what, why we are using the, the orchestrator, and why always here we are listening to the queue and how we can read data from queue, how we can pass data to to the service bus. Service bus maybe it will be more advanced, but we'll, we have to learn it and we we'll learn more about it. Mass transit is something uh, getting popular more now. And they, to be honest with you, they save a lot of time and code. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll try to use it as, as if you can. So this is the diagram. Please don't be scared of it. It is simple and uh, it's not that hard. But you can, you know, I can upload the image to Azure just by one function only, but just uh, the first endpoint. I can straight away send it there rather than I make it JSON file. I can make it here, you know, in this uh, great HTTP trigger. I can say, take the image, convert it, send it to the blobber search, and return to me the straight away the, the URLs. Or you can straight away send it to the database or the buzz. But as we said, we need to learn more about it and we see uh, how we can use that structure here. Uh, this briefly, and we'll do it step by step, you know, every uh, two, three days, I'll, I'll try to record video and we'll show you how we can, uh, uh, about each, each one of these functions. So that's very briefly. Uh, before we go to the demo, let's go to, let's go to Microsoft documentation and uh, what they are talking here about the the Azure function. If someone, he don't know uh, Azure functions. So Azure, Azure functions, they are a uh, serverless solution that allow to write least code. We'll back to this one again. So they said least infrastructure and save the cost. So imagine that Azure function is a, a console application and you want to run, run it online. So I, we can do that, but how we can do that, we have to, in the normal, uh, way we have to create a, a virtual machine and run that as a console application on that virtual machine. You can run it as a timer or a trigger or anything you can do there. But they said, no, we can give you something easier and cheaper and better. We give you this solution. We give you many, many features with it to save your time writing code. So it can be API, it can be timer, it can be uh, taking data from uh, or sending data to any SQL server or Redis or, or uh, Kafka or anything. They have many uh, endpoints that can work with it. So I'm saving my time writing least code by the, the feature they are, uh, allow or they give us. And same time, I'm, I'm not running any VM or I'm running anything. And to be honest with you, they are very, very, very simple and nice to work with it, uh, these functions. They have many scenarios here. Uh, you can you can learn from them, uh, and also the it's simple also to be hosted in, in Azure, and they have uh, 
local emulator only for the queue blob storage and uh, yeah, the queue and blob storage, they have the uh, emulator for that. I'll show you that soon too. But I didn't find anything for uh, servers, but I saw someone he's sharing something, but I will back to that one when I can. So the type of the, the or they, they mentioned here, they said, oh, you can write least code. What's mean, what they mean here with that least code? So you back here, they said to you, I can give you easy small and easy way to read it from blob or trigger blob or Cosmos DB or, or uh, SQL Server. There is endpoint for that, so uh, or uh, or they are binded already. So we'll see how how that's easy and simple for us to to call send a grid or calling uh, or reading of data or sending data so to service bus. Uh, the main things we'll use is the HTTP trigger and the blob storage and the queue also. Uh, we'll use service bus. I don't know. I haven't seen anything. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, I don't know in my scenario anything's uh, in some degree. But I don't want to make it to be honest with you. Something hard and uh, very complicated. I've been using long time. You know, timer and uh, the table storage that they are very useful for us. You know, you can run schedule time and the and the Azure function said, oh, run every day, uh, eight, uh, two p.m. or eight, one a.m. or run it every twenty minutes. You can just uh, use the timer there. I haven't used that Kafka or anything from that stuff, but I've been more in depth with the blob storage and queue and uh, tables and uh, timers. Uh, so that is very briefly. Uh, so uh, I don't want the videos to be too long, to be honest with you. So I will leave this one as an introduction. And the second video, I will straight away will jump together and we'll create a small uh, Web API, uh, sorry, uh, MVC application. That application will just upload in the normal way how we can upload the image to to, to our local uh, to our local machine, and we store same uh, same time in the database. After that, we'll go to the uh, we we'll remove this piece of code that a few lines will be, and straight away just change them with HTTP client to call the Azure uh, server, sorry Azure uh, function. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, please let me know if you have any question or if you have any any uh, recommendation on that uh, diagram I have at here or any uh, improvement, we can do it together again. That's fine, we can add any service. I'm happy again to accept it one more time if you feel that it's a bit hard. I couldn't find anything to make uh, animation in that one, but maybe we can in the future, we can do something like that. I will see you again in the next video.